Okay, okay. Sorry for our technical difficulties, but we're about ready to start. Are we at one o'clock? Mm -hmm. Ladies, Keaton, Tate, welcome to art class. First of all, my name's Kisa Hausman. This is Tate Hausman. And we are so excited that you are joining us today. And I just want to say, this is day 10 of art lessons. We have done all last week, Monday through Friday, and we did another fun week this week, Monday through Friday. I have next week's all set and ready to go, and I'm going to give you a sneak preview at the end of class today. And I also want to say thank you for joining in, sharing your work with us, sharing your comments and suggestions, your donations, your time, everything that you have come into our lives as much as we've hoped that we've come into celebrating art with you. And it's just been a lot of fun. So thank you. On that note, we ready to get started today? Okay, you want to talk about our artist? Or you want me to talk about our artist? You think you'll give that one to me? So, our artist today is Modigliani. Can you say that? Modigliani. It's a funny name. Modigliani. That's a fun word. You can just say it the rest of the day walking around, wandering around. Modigliani. Modigliani. So, this is an Italian artist, an Impressionist artist, who was known for his portraits and his paintings, as well as his sculpture. He was very known for this very elongated face, elongated noses and features and things like that. You see that? You think it's funny? So this is a portrait of a woman. And I just want you to know how long, see how long her face is and her nose and her eyes. And we're going to use this as our inspiration today. He was influenced by Impressionist artists and African sculpture and all sorts of fun um, other artwork. Again, you know how we talk about that? How other artists showed other artists, showed you how to do this. So for our lesson, we're going to become sculptors today. We're going to make our own sculpture. And by doing that, we're going to make a clay dough. You can, if you do not have some of these materials, don't worry, just follow along. You can draw some of the funny faces. If you happen to have Play-Doh in your house, you can use that as well. If you um, are drawing and you don't have anything to carve these out of, or even if you do, you can, watch out, that's contagious if you yawn. You know, I'll catch it. Oh, I just yawned. So if you are able to go outside and it's sunny, you can take, I'm sorry parents, I'll apologize in advance, but you can take mud and make funny faces in the mud and use these same techniques. So um, now that everyone's gonna be muddy after class. So are you ready to make some clay dough? Okay, get your bowls ready. And what we're gonna do is we're going to, I have one cup of salt. This is a two cup measuring. Dish. So when you see me put just one scoop of flour, I'm putting in two cups of flour. So I already have my salt in here, so I'm going to add my salt first. You want to put the salt in the bowl? So this is one cup of salt. Now, can you get me out a full scoop of flour? Can you put all the way up to the top? Because that's a two cup measuring. If you have a one cup, you're going to put two cups in there. I think the best thing to do is to do it from inside here. Let me see if I can scoop that up well enough. And let's see, do we have it? So how many, how many cups of flour are we adding? How many cups? Two cups in there. That's right. Okay. So we've got our dry ingredients right here. Let's move this flour out of the way, Tate. And will you go ahead and just mix that salt and flour together? There are other recipes for doughs. There are Play-Doh recipes you can make that use cream of tartar. The thing is, is they use heat. You have to use either a stove top or boiling water. Um, so for the purposes of class today, we're using a dry dough that, that doesn't use any heat and um, that we can mix right in front of you and be ready to go right away. Uh, you think you've got that salt and flour mixed in together? You feeling good about it? Okay, good deal. Now I have measured out one cup of water in here. I don't want to add all the water. I want to add hmm, about three quarters of a cup to the 
So you're going to leave a little bit in there. Let's do that. Just leave a little bit in the bottom. Let's add a little more. That's probably good. Okay, can you slowly mix that up? Don't mix it up too much because we haven't added our oil yet. Just start to blend it. Okay, and let's pause just a minute. Okay, so, so far we have added two cups of flour and mixed it with one cup of salt. Then we've added about three quarters of our one cup of water. And now we're going to add two tablespoons. So here's a tablespoon right here. Okay, if you hold it. I will pour the oil in there. Two tablespoons of oil. Now, it can be any cooking oil. If you have coconut, um, whatever you have that you want to use will work. The oil just gives it a little bit of a finish. You can make it without the oil, but it gives it a little bit of a slicker finish and it makes it a little bit easier to work with. Okay, now you're going to want to mix everything together and we want to start getting those clumps out. It's kind of hard, isn't it? Does it get a little hard? Make sure you're scraping those edges. The fun part's about to begin. How's everyone doing? Isn't it fun when your kitchen meets art? So, now. Now we're going to get dirty. Let's get our hands in here. So now what you want to do is you want to take your hands and you're going to start kneading the dough. Yep. And then you get it in there and then you turn it over. Yep. And you're going to get that flour on the bottom. You're going to knead it into the dough. And we're going to see if we need to add some more water. I think we are going to need to add a little bit more water. Wait just a minute. Wait just a minute. Let's make sure we get that all if it's still feeling a little bit dry, you want to get it pretty kneaded together. Ours is still not clumping, so we're going to add a little bit of water. Just add a little bit. Keep going. A little bit more. Okay, now mix that up. This is where you kind of get into a little game of a little bit more water. If it gets too sticky, you add a little bit more flour. And you're going to keep kneading it. Oh, you got a lot of dry ingredients on the bottom to pick up. Okay, we have any questions so far? Everyone doing great? Okay, now flip it over so you get the bottom part yet, and you're going to get all those dry. How is yours feeling? Are you feeling you, like you might need some more water? Yep, you still feels a little dry? You can test yours. If yours is feeling a little dry, then continue to add the water. You're not going to add more water than this, so hang on just a second. Let me flip it and mix it, and then we'll pull it out. Yeah, go ahead and add the water right on there. Not just No, not all of it. Just There we go. Okay, now keep kneading it all together until you get all those crumbly bits off the bottom of your bowl. Everyone doing good? All right. You think you need more water? Why don't you add a little more water? It's looking a little crumbly. And I think we're going to end up adding almost all of our cup. Probably. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So now Tate's going to keep working with his. And I went ahead and made up an extra one before class. And this is what we're going for. So when you're in your bowl, so watch this, baby. When you're in your bowl, you're going to be kneading it. You flatten it, and then you roll it over, and flatten it, and roll it over. And we're, we're not going to go to the table yet, Keaton, because I'm going to show some drawing. So, OK. I'm going to clean up behind you so you can have we're going to use a baking tray to work on, um, just because that way we can hold it up and show you. 
You want to knead it on your baking tray? Oh, that's fine. Oh, okay. Oh, now we're a little wet. So hang on, let me show this. We did get a little bit too much water in there, so I'm going to sprinkle a little flour on that. And once you knead that in, Good job, Tate. What you want to happen is when you lay it on your table, you want it to be able, you're going to work it and knead it, and you want it to be able to just pick up like this. It'll be a little sticky, but you don't want it to stick to the surface when you pick it up. See how it cleanly pulls up? So you're going to keep kneading it. If it gets too sticky, add a little, just a sprinkle of flour, just like I did to Tate's. You think you need any more? Okay, I'm going to dust off my hands over here while you keep kneading it. That's the nice thing about being in an art studio. I have a sink right there, and you're in your kitchen, so you should have a sink right there too. So while Tate is kneading his, I'm just going to review a little bit about faces. Do you remember, or if you didn't have a chance to do the face video, normally... A face has eyes about the middle, right there. The nose comes down to about halfway between there. So you've got your eyes here. And then your mouth is about right here. If we look, if we look at Modigliani's right here, You'll notice the difference. First of all, his face is very long, much longer than the oval we associate with really drawing a realistic face. Oh, yes, sorry, guys. I was drawing in very quickly. So here's Modigliani's face. Here's what our faces would look like. The eyes about in the middle, the nose line falling halfway between the eyes and the chin, and the mouth following, following, falling between the bottom of the nose and the chin there. But if you look at his, look where the eyes are. The eyes are way up high. His eyes are way up here, way up high. I'll just put some eyeballs in there right now. And then look how long his nose is. It's almost as long as this entire head. The nose is all the way. Look, long and skinny like that. And then normally the mouth comes to where the center of the eyes are. That mouth is about the width of the nose and it's right underneath. Right there. So this is shows you when you change the proportions or change where things go. You want to wash your hands? Yeah, go ahead. When you change where things go, you can end up with really funny faces. So how do you feel about making some sculpture with really funny faces? Tate's washing his hands and getting his dough together. How's everyone's dough gumming? We have our dough all together and ready to go. Okay, now I left the dough the natural color because as you see, it looks very much like the stone, the stone that they would have used to carve. So we're gonna pretend we have stone today, even though we have our own homemade dough. And, um, but what you can do is at any time after this project, if you decide not to bake these or to keep them, you can always separate sections like this, add food coloring, you just add a drop, work it in together, and you can have different colored Play-Dohs. This dough does need to be stored in the refrigerator afterwards, and it's good in a sealed bag for about two to three weeks. So you can do it. It can also be baked to hard or air dried to hard, which I will give you those instructions at the end of class. Anybody have questions about the dough? Everyone having fun making it? It's a lot of fun to make, isn't it? If you are sharing dough with another artist in your kitchen, just half it and you're going to make smaller faces than we're going to make today. So, Keaton, if you want to come closer 
so you we can get what's going on. I'm going to take a big hunk of dough, a little bit more than half. Take about a little bit more than half of whatever your portion is. And I'm going to use this so you can see it. You ready? We're going to make this long, skinny face right here. So we're going to press it down. Press it down. And so you can press down. I'm using the flat of my hand. You can always use a rolling pin and roll these out. You can use cutters to cut them. But to give it a more organic shape, we're just going to use our hands today. Now, it does come to a little taper down here. So we're going to, Keaton, I may have to do this in reverse so they can see it. So I will try to do that. So come down. How you doing, Tate? <laughs> Tate's getting into it. Okay, here, try this. Try, yeah, 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 there you go. Now, watch this. Okay, yeah, take your hands and go to the sides and smush it in. Oh, I like that. Good job. So we're going to get it pretty flat and even. So watch. Your hands are almost the size of mine. Yep, there you go. Using this part of your hand right here as you press. Good job. Here are our faces coming on here. Now, the fun part about this is there are no mistakes. You can at any time decide, oh, I want to pick part of that up. And then you just put it back in, and you work it back in, and you get it as part of your picture. So, you feeling like you have a face shape? Tate's added some. I'm going to let him get his so we're ready to do a funny nose. You ready? You feeling good? Okay. Once you have your face shape, and remember, we're long and we're kind of coming to that taper or a pointy end at the end. See how this works? I'm going to get another hunk. And now I'm going to do make a snake or long. You've done this with Play-Doh. This is actually in ceramics. They do this all the time. We're going to make the long, skinny nose. So I'm going to make a snake about there. And remember his nose, and I'm going to put that on there. And maybe I should do this so you can see at the same time. See what we're doing? This is our funny face. Isn't this funny? How's your, oh, I like your nose. Okay. When working with clay, sometimes when joining pieces, you need to score and slip. Is that something you need to do with this type of dough? You don't need it to do it with this dough, but that is correct. If you're working with a clay that's made of um, a natural clay, you actually have different elements. So you have uh, sand in that clay that needs to connect. With this, we just have flour, and it's more like you're baking. Um, a little bit of scoring doesn't hurt. The one thing, because this is very different than working with an actual clay, thicker sides, um, because it can, if it's real thin, it'll dry and crack when it dries. So I did pretty thick sides on here. But that is an excellent question. You can do that by all means because it's kind of fun. You ready to do some, oh, what a nice nose. Are we ready to do some eyes? So I'm going to take a little piece and I'm going to make what looks a little bit like a, a long oval and then I'm going to pinch those sides just like that. So I'm going to do another one. So see, I kind of make a long oval. I need a little bit more. Like that. See how we can just kind of make a little bit oval? And then we pinch the sides to get that eye shape in there. And notice his eyes almost touch at the nose. So we went ahead and let them do that. Good job. Now, she mentioned about the scoring when you're working with clay and the slip. What you can do is when we get into it, if you really want it to connect, you actually work the dough. The dough will end up joining itself together. You can work those edges in, which I'll show you a little bit, but you can do that as you go along too. So kind of work those edges in to the dough. It's a funny face, isn't it? 
Now, Tate, do you want to make an eyeball on top of that? You don't want to? Okay. Well, how about some eyebrows? See the funny eyebrows on here? So we're going to make little mini snakes. And let's give it, and look, it's a unibrow. It connects. A unibrow. Okay. <laughs> See? Look, it connects all to part. All together. I'm going to have to add a little bit more. I'm going to snake that a little bit. See, we just wind it to make it long and thin. You just do that twisting. And if you didn't see me do that, you just take a piece and you're rubbing it between the fats of your palms. So right in the middle, right there, just like that. And the more you move that around, you can get even. You can sit here and do this all day with, with clay. That's just fun. Okay. What are we missing? We're missing the hair. What else are we missing? The mouth. Okay, look at this little tiny mouth. So I'm just going to take a little shape. I'm going to place it right there, just like that. And you can take your fingernail or something, and I'm going to take the end of this paintbrush. We're going give, to give it a little mouth. You want to take the end of my paintbrush? I just happen to have that. But you can take your fingernail or a little, it won't hurt any object. Oh, I like it. Now, if it is sitting right there on the top, you do want to connect it a little bit better. This flower makes my nose itch. <laughs> Oh, I like that mouth. Okay, how's everyone's faces doing? What do you think about Modigliani? Do you think it's funny the way he made his face shapes really long and really different? It's fun to see. Oh, Tate made a little mouth right there. Okay, we ready to make some hair? We've got some funny hair right here. So I'm going to make something like if I was making a little cookie. It's pre still pretty thick. About a circle like this. See that? And I'm going to give him some hair. Or actually, it's a, this is a portrait of a woman. So I'm going to give her some hair right here. And I need to make it a little thicker underneath. So I'm going to add some more right there. And then we're going to make another one. Oh, I like that hair, Tate. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. Now, the fun part about this is this starts looking almost cartoonish, doesn't it? And it shows you how when you just change the shape of the human figure, change the shape of those patterns where the eyes come in the middle and really come down here, how you can end up creating different characters. It almost becomes like a character. So now we need some, I'm going to carry my hair all the way down the side. So I'm going to make another snake right here. And I'm going to take that hair down the side like that and just blending it in. You can use a touch of water too on your hand, um, almost acting like slip to blend. There we go. Now Tate did some indentations for his eyes. Can you see Tate's right there? Another thing you can do, what honey? Oh, you would give it a goatee and a mustache. I love that. Another thing is you can actually make little circles for eyes. I'd have to add a little bit more. And then I'm gonna add, did you add your ears already? I'm gonna add some ears right now. So I'm gonna give it that little piece. Yeah, we're going to add those ears. 
think our Modigliani is coming together. Now here's the fun part. You can leave this just like it is. You can leave it and you can say, I copied the great sculpture Modigliani and I made this wonderful piece. And you can take this, you'll have to remove it from a baking sheet, you'll have to let it air dry a day or so, and then you can place it to dry in your oven at 180 to 200 degrees. I'm going to do some more. And um, you can no more than 10 minutes to really watch it, but you can let it dry out and it'll stay just like this. Or you can decide, okay, that was really fun. I learned about Modigliani and you can start, take your other one, and you can start just making fun portraits of your own, thinking about nose shapes and funny eyes. You can make members of your family. You can make funny hair. You can make funny portraits. You can make lots of string hair that comes out from everywhere. You don't have to make it look like Modigliani. You can make it look like you. You're, art you're the artist today. So you can have fun with funny faces, funny hair, with goatees and noses and shapes. You can also take different elements and come in and do different shapes in to give it detail. You can come in and add lines to hair. You can do scroll work. You can use anything that has an edge to it. So you could use the tip of a pencil, the edge of a fork. You could use, um, I'm using the back of a um, paintbrush. If you had a chopstick, any of those things would work to create these patterns. Oh, I'm going to give this one some ears. I could sit here and do this forever. This is so funny. We're not that worried about proportion. We're more worried about kind of playing and seeing what designs make. So, Keaton, you want to pull us up? And we'll talk about how you keep the, how you make these stay. So, okay. So I have just a little bit. I think that's enough to make another funny portrait. But, so what do you do with these now that you have them? You can continue to make more and you can experiment until you get one that you just love. You can also roll this out and do any shapes you want to. But it's really fun to do the faces. This is a type of salt dough which you can bake in your oven. It also will air dry if you just leave it, leave it sitting in a dry place, somewhere that's not going to get wet or damp. If you're going to let it air dry, it's going to take at least a week. So you're going to want to set it somewhere and not touch it. You also want to make sure you have thick edges. So see how thick we kept these edges right here? You don't want really, really thin edges because those will end up crumbling and breaking. The other thing you can do is you can let this air dry for about 24 hours. Then you can stick it in your oven, not with a baking sheet. You want to actually lay it on your oven rack because you want the air to circulate all around. So you're going to want to make sure it dries enough that you can pick it up. When you put it in your oven, you're going to do it about 180 to 200 degrees, no more than 10 minutes. You're going to check on it about eight to ten minutes, make sure it's not browning. You do not want this to brown because it's almost burning it in a way. When it feels nice and hard, let it cool and then you can paint it with anything you want to. You can varnish it, you can paint it with acrylic paints, you can color it. It's really fun. Um, I used an unbleached flower so mine is a little creamier because I wanted it to look like our picture here. But if you have a white flower, it's going to look really white. And um, this is a fun way to do, you can create keepsakes, you can do handprints, you can make Christmas ornaments. But you can also learn a little bit about art history and make a Modigliani.
So I'm going to let take, or you can spell out letters and names and different things like that, can't you? So I hope you've had fun making funny faces. I hope you continue to play with your dough. If you decide you don't want to do anything with it, you can clump up all your dough, put it in a sealed plastic container, plastic bag, or some sort of Tupperware type container, and store it in your refrigerator. And it'll keep for about two to three weeks, so you can pull it out, decide you want to learn about something else. If you have rain headed your way, this is hours of fun. You can also color it with food coloring. Um, remember how I said you could separate it? Put it in the dough, knead that food coloring in. Um, we have any questions about the dough? Are we all set? Well, let me tell you a little bit about next week. I'm super excited, and I hope you are too. So I'm going to give you a little preview because I need you to save something. So on Monday, and let me preface this before I tell you Monday, I am going to put the full lesson list and class list on on Saturday. So you'll see what we're doing each day, and you'll get a class list for that. So you're able to gather those supplies. Just so you know, if for some reason you miss a day, we post all the videos after they're live to Facebook, and we put them on YouTube under my name, Kisa Hausman. So you can catch those at any time if you miss a lesson. Um, so Monday which is somebody's birthday. We're going to do What Do You Talk Origami. Tuesday, we're going to do Horsing Around, where I'm going to teach you how to draw a horse. Wednesday, we're doing Baby Powder Impasto and Van Gogh. Thursday, we're going to learn a little bit about drawing and shading using apples. And Friday, we're going to do Takeout Printmaking. So for Friday, I do need you to save some styrofoam containers, um, something that will give us a flat styrofoam edge. So this is from a meat tray that has been washed and sanitized. Um, you can also do it from if you have take out some of those square, but we're going to be cutting this square out and it's going to be flat. So you don't need to worry about whether it has edges. You'll just take a pair of scissors or a knife and you'll cut a flat. But you do want to gather some of these styrofoam containers. So if you're preparing some ground beef, save and sanitize your tray during the week. If you're getting a takeout from a local restaurant, save and sanitize that um, to go. So we're going to be reusing that. And I think that's it. Tate is go. Oh my goodness. Tate is making my favorite quote right here. Can you see that, Keaton? Art is man's nature, right here. He's almost done. Let's keep that up. Oh, he's art. Art is man's nature. Nature is God's art. We'll take a picture when it's done and send it to you. Thanks for joining us for Art Lessons. Y'all have a great weekend. Oh, by the way, we're going to slide a little PDF with a fun craft for y'all to do over the weekend. So watch for that later today, and we'll talk to you soon. See you Monday.